Welcome back friends to another episode of Build A Lot Acres. In today's episode, we're gonna focus on the basics of chainsaws. We'll discover what they're used for, some of the basic parts, some of the basic tools, maintenance, that kind of stuff. So please stay tuned. Some of the most basic parts of a chainsaw are going to include the power head, which is the engine, which is going to power the saw. That engine is going to power a clutch, which is going to spin the chain on a fixed bar. You're also going to have a safety brake, you're going to have a pull cord to start the engine, you're going to have a throttle. Most models of saws are going to have felling dogs, which you can see here. Those are going to vary in size depending on what saw you have. Some saws may not have any. Those are really designed to dig into the bark of a tree to help you hold the weight of the saw up and pivot the saw on the bark or on the tree. So there's a lot of different sizes of chainsaws. We have small homeowner saws ranging from 30 to 40 cc's. We have mid-grade saws in the 50 to 60 cc class. And we have large commercial saws going all the way up to 120 or so cc's. Cc's being cubic centimeters is how big the displacement is with the engine. So for most people, if you've never run saws before, I would recommend getting something like this here. This is a 45 cc saw. It's going to be around 10 pounds power head weight, meaning the power head itself weighs about 10 pounds. Then you could add a little bit for the bar, the chain, the fluids inside the saw. So by the time you're all set up, you might be 13 or 14 pounds, but it's going to be light as far as chainsaws go. There are multiple types of chainsaws. There's gasoline chainsaws, such as you see here. These are gonna run on a two-stroke mix. So basically what that means is that for every one part oil, you're gonna have 40 or 50 parts gasoline, meaning a 40 to one mix or a 50 to one mix. That's gonna vary depending on your saw manufacturer or what they recommend. So you wanna check your owner's manual to make sure that you have your gas mixed to the correct ratio. So gasoline saws are gonna have two reservoirs. You're gonna have a reservoir for your bar oil, which is gonna help lubricate your bar. It usually has a tactifier in it, help it stick to the bar better. And then you're gonna have a reservoir for your two stroke gas mix. So as I said earlier, you're gonna mix your gasoline with two stroke oil. That's gonna typically have how many gallons of gas you need to mix with that amount of oil. So this particular container is designed to be mixed with 2.5 gallons of gas, that's gonna give me a 50 to one mix. Now the electric chainsaws are really gonna come in handy if you do a lot of cutting near your house and you don't wanna necessarily mess with an engine or gas or oil, or if you wanna be quiet and you don't wanna disturb neighbors or something to that effect, or maybe you're in a building and you can't have exhaust fumes coming around. So electric chainsaws typically aren't going to be as big or powerful as a gasoline chainsaw. They're going to be better for your smaller diameter wood, or maybe delimbing trees. The battery powered chainsaws are going to be similar to the electric. In my opinion, they're not quite going to keep up with the gas saw. I think maybe down the road, the technology could get so that they do keep up. For most users, I would recommend a gasoline saw. And to start out with something in the 40 to 50 cc class, that's going to be a good starter saw for most people. There's a number of brands. I'm not gonna recommend any particular brand. There's a few select brands that most professional loggers are gonna end up sticking with. A lot of that's gonna come down to your own experience with that brand, your dealer support, how many dealers you have nearby to work on the saw, to sell you parts, etc. So keep all that in mind when you choose the brand of saw for you. So 
So the first tool we're gonna to talk about is a scrunch. A scrunch is a half screwdriver, half wrench. The main purpose of the scrunch is gonna to be to take off the bar nuts so you can take the clutch cover off and get to the bar and chain. It's also gonna have either a torx or typically a flat end on it. So you can use that to take out multiple different types of screws to gain access to different parts of your saw. That's gonna vary depending on brand. Some brands tend to have the torx, other brands tend to have the flat. To remove the clutch cover now this is an area you're going to want to make sure you keep this fairly clean it's going to end up getting a lot of sawdust mixed with oil so this is going to get a lot of grime here so you're going to want to take this off i would recommend at least every time you cut and give this a clean you can do that with a rag you could use compressed air with a compressor and a blow gun the number of ways so this is what you call a seven tooth sprocket these teeth are going to drive the chain along the bar which is fixed you're also going to notice there's a tensioner screw as you tighten this it's going to give the chain more or less tension on the bar. You want a little bit of tension, but you don't want it so tight that you can't pull it down. So I would say when you can pull it down so that the top of the drive link teeth are just showing, that's a good amount of tension. So the next tool we're gonna to talk about is a small flathead screwdriver. What this is gonna come in handy is to clean out the bar groove with your chain run. You can get some built up sawdust and grime and dirt in there which can cause your chain to fall off the track. So you're gonna to wanna to take and every so often clean out that groove. Now you can do that with a number of things. You could use a putty knife, you could use a little screwdriver, you could even use maybe a spare piece of vinyl siding. I've used that before. There's a number of things you can use to clean out that groove. So next we'll discuss files. You can have a round file, which is main purpose, is gonna be to sharpen your teeth. Those are going to come in different sizes depending on what size chain you have in your saw. You're also going to have a flat file which is main purpose is going to be to take down the rakers. We'll discuss rakers, teeth, drive links, all that in a little bit. So stay tuned for that. We're also going to have a marker. When sharpening your teeth, you're going to want to mark what tooth you start on because once you start spinning the chain and sharpening, you can forget which tooth you started. So I recommend keeping a marker in your bag for that purpose. We're also going to have a stump vise. Let's demonstrate that. So I'll demonstrate you for you real quick the stump vise. So we're going to... If you're out in the middle of the woods, you're not going to have access to a regular vise or your shop or any, a lot of your tools. So you're going to need a way to sharpen your saw in the field if you dull your chain. You're going to pound the stump vise into a piece of wood. And you're going to tighten the screw. That's going to give you the ability to sharpen your chain in the field. Now, as I said in previous video, the thing I don't like about the stump vise, if I just naturally let the saw sit, tighten the screw, you can't spin the chain because it hits the bottom of the vise. And that's with a small homeowner saw with small dogs. When you start getting into big saws, not only do you have limited space to put the saw, but the dogs prevent you from really being able to use the vise. The vise, in my opinion, some vices should be bigger, with a bigger depth throat to accept larger saws. So I really don't like stump vices. They're better than nothing, but I would recommend getting a regular vise added to a receiver hitch, like I showed in my previous Iowa Tools video. So there's different types of files. We're gonna have just basic round files with no guides, round file with a guide built in, flat files. They also make files that have a flat file and round file all built into one. So you can chop in a tooth and take the raker down all in one pass. But for starting out, just a regular flat file and a round file like this is really all you need. Some of the other tools you're gonna want in your basic kit are gonna be extra files, some rags, some safety glasses, things of that nature. So the last tool we're gonna to talk about is gonna be a grease gun. Most saws, once you get into the larger commercial saws, are gonna have a sprocket on the end of the bar that you need to grease. 
a lot of times they'll have a hole that you can apply the grease gun into and sometimes they won't. So for saws that don't, like this one here, what we're gonna do is take the chain off and we'll grease it manually. So let me show you how to do that. Now you can see the sprocket with the teeth. So we're gonna take our grease gun and we're gonna squirt some grease down into that sprocket. We're gonna give it a couple spins, make sure it gets all the grease evenly applied. While we have the cover off, we're gonna blow it out and clean it off real quick. So now that we've greased the sprocket and we've cleaned off the bar cover and the housing, we can reinstall the bar chain. Now we're gonna tighten it most of the way. We're gonna leave it a little loose so that we can adjust the tensioner screw. As I said, you want it tight, but not too, super tight. That's, we we'll finish tightening the nuts. And now we're good to go. So the last maintenance item we're gonna cover is the air filter. You gotta clean the air filter out occasionally. You might, might have to change it out too. So we're gonna take the cover off. We're gonna take the filter, and we're gonna blow it off with compressed air from the inside going up. Just quickly reinstall the air filter, put the cover on, and we're good to go. So now that we've discussed some of the basic tools, let's discuss the chain itself. There's a few basic parts to any chainsaw chain. You're gonna have a drive link, as you can see these little triangles here. The drive link's gonna drive the chain along the bar and catching the tooth sprocket from the clutch that we saw earlier. Now there's gonna be a different number of drive links depending on how long your bar is. All that information is gonna be listed on your bar. It's gonna be stamped on the bar itself. You're also gonna have the cutting teeth, which actually cut the wood, and you're gonna have a raker, which is gonna prevent the tooth from cutting in too far. The more you file the raker down, the more aggressively the cutting tooth is gonna dig in and it's gonna pull the saw into the wood. Think of it like a windshield. If you had no windshield on a car, you're gonna be getting a full blast of wind in your face. The higher you make the windshield, the more wind gets blocked. So the raker is really a safety design and it helps a smoother cut. Without the raker, the saw would pull into the wood and you wouldn't be able to control it. So as you sharpen the teeth, you also want to file the rakers down with a flat file. You want to keep a certain ratio. The tooth needs to be higher than the raker, but you need to play with the ratio to how aggressively you want your saw to cut. Let's talk about dogs a little bit. Depending on the size of your saw, Gonna have different size dogs on it. A felling dog is, as I said, it's designed when you stick that dog into the tree, it's gonna help support a lot of that power head weight so you can focus more on the cut. It's also gonna come in handy 
dig into the wood to help you pivot during your cut. So a lot of saws are gonna come with either very small dogs or maybe a dog on one side. This 460, believe it or not, came with one small felling dog on just the inside of the saw. So I actually took that off about aftermarket larger dogs. These are gonna be nice if you have a lot of thick bark trees. So we've discussed some of the tools you need for the chainsaw, some of the different parts of a chainsaw. Now let me show you how you can use a chainsaw. The most basic way is gonna be cross cutting. If you have a log, you're gonna be cutting it into chunks or sections. If you're cutting a tree down, you're still gonna be doing a cross cut. Another type of cutting you can do is what's called noodling. That's cutting with the grain of the log. If we had a large piece of wood that weighed too much and I couldn't physically pick it up to put it into a bucket to unload it to a truck or pick it up onto a splitter, I could either split it by hand or I could do what they call noodling. So let me demonstrate noodling. I've got on my safety chaps, I have ear protection. Let's noodle this log. So there we have it, one noodled log. Now the reason they call it noodling should be fairly obvious. You're gonna have these long noodle-like slivers of wood. By the way, there's a tip. Save these and dry them out. These make excellent fire starters. You have a nice dry pile of noodles and you pull the match to that, it's gonna burst into flames. So if you do noodle logs, keep some of your noodles for firewood starters for your wood stove. So one thing you're going to want to get good at in a hurry is sharpening your chain. A small saw with a sharp chain is going to outcut a large saw with adult chain. So unless you like spending a lot of money on new chains, which, which can range from 20 to $40 per chain, get good at sharpening your chain. So let me give you a quick basic tutorial. I'll do future videos on in-depth chain sharpening. But for this video, I'm just going to give you the basics. So I'm going to use just a basic round file. There's going to be no guide, no specialty tools, just the most basic of sharpening tools. Now the chains are going to have a pre-marked line designating the angle which you should be sharpening to. So I'm gonna take my file. I'm just gonna give it some nice, good strokes. Now I'm gonna mark that tooth with the marker that I talked about earlier. Now I know where I started. So I can spin my chain and I can work my way down. All right, so in a couple of minutes time, I was able to sharpen all the teeth. This chain is fairly new and was somewhat sharp, so it didn't take a lot, just a few touch-up strokes on each tooth. If I can get this to, to zoom in. Now, like I said, this, this chain is fairly new, so I don't need to file the rakers down because I still have plenty of height. As you sharpen this tooth, it's gonna to get lower and lower and you're gonna to have to file the rake down. As you can see here, there's still some height. So the tooth has plenty of area to cut. As its tooth gets shorter, I'm gonna to have to file this rake down. So this pointy raker is gonna get more of a flat top. All right, so I'm with the wood pile. Let's see how good I did sharpening the chain. I got about a 16 inch piece of red oak.
All right, so we've discussed what tools you may need for chainsaws, different types of chainsaws, some of the different parts of a chainsaw, how to use a chainsaw. So this is meant to be a basic tutorial. I'm not gonna go into great detail regarding fine tuning a chainsaw or playing around with a carburetor. That's not stuff that the basic first time chainsaw user is gonna need to know right off. If you're gonna buy a chainsaw and you've watched some of my other videos and decided that you wanna cut wood and need a saw, I would recommend bringing your saw to a dealer for the repairs until you get familiar enough with saws to try and fix them yourself. So I hope this video has been informative. If you have any comments that you'd like to leave below, maybe you're very familiar with chainsaws and you think there's some stuff that I left out or that I should have added or should have changed, please leave that in the comments. And as always, please subscribe and thanks for watching.